Hey everybody, this is Brad at Pisces Pet Emporium coming back at you with another video here. Today we're going to be talking about my favorite invertebrate and that's going to be the giant centipede. We're going to be going over a couple of warnings about these animals as well as their general housekeeping, maintenance and diet. But for the most part, these guys are going to be pretty simple as long as you follow my simple and easy instructions. Before we get into it, I want to have a warning. These guys have a very potent venom. All species do. So whenever you see those videos of the people handling their centipedes, I do not recommend that for you. It will not end out well for you. These guys do what's known as a tester bite and they will bite absolutely anything and everything that they're about to climb on and make sure that it's stable. If it so happens to be your arm, they're going to figure out it's not very stable as you're soft and squishy and inject venom into you. These guys have an incredibly potent venom that are known to cause dizziness, nausea, cardiac problems, breathing issues, and there haven't been any fatalities, but don't be the first. These guys are very potent in venom and they have an issue of biting first and asking questions later. These guys are an amazing, amazing invertebrate to keep you just have to have a head on your shoulders and use that brain that you've got. So the size of these centipedes are going to range anywhere from about uh, six to eight inches. That's going to be your average mark. There are some smaller ones that are maybe only four or five and there are definitely some larger ones that can potentially get up to a foot to 16 inches. But today we're going to be talking about your average or the ones that we sell here at Pisces Pet Emporium which are going to be your giant Vietnamese. These guys usually top out at about six to eight inches in captivity. So first we're going to be going over housing. So a lot of people like to use plastic tubs and the Zilla Critter Keepers. I don't really like those as they are actually very strong animals and they can pop those doors open um, and get out as well as if the plastic is soft enough in the tub, they can just chew their way through. For the most part, what I recommend is specifically the Zilla Critter Cage, the 29 gallon tall. The reason I recommend this one in particular is because it has a sliding glass door that they can't pop open, unlike you would use an aquarium. I really don't recommend an aquarium in this case because you would have to have a pop top lid. The sliding lid on the Zilla Critter Cage is going to be your most ideal situation of using it for this animal, as well as it also offers a locking mechanism. Both the tank comes with one, as well as it has a whole area for you to add a padlock to it. I do recommend using this padlock as it's going to make it very nice and safe for you. These guys are also going to need about four to five inches of substrate in the bottom of the tank, leaving you a good decent area if that tank for the safety zone. These guys cannot climb glass, so you do not have to worry about them climbing glass. So when you have that extra height from that Zilla 29 gallon tall with that nice thick substrate layer, you can assure that it won't escape. Usually about 75% humidity is what I recommend or even higher upwards to the low 80s to the mid 80s. You never really want to go up into the 90s as that can cause respiratory issues for the animal. The nice thing about these guys is that because they do require such a thick layer of substrate, they do get most of their moisture from their food and burrowing inside of the substrate. So if you keep your substrate moist and your ambient humidity up, you shouldn't have any issues with them. Lastly, with housing, uh, the main concern is going to be your heat. These guys actually like it quite toasty. I like to keep mine at about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. The way that I achieved this is taking one of those uh, heating pads and sticking it on the side of the aquarium, not the bottom, because if you put them on the bottom, they're going to burrow to get away from the heat and they're actually going to get closer to that heating element. They're not going to know what to do. They're going to get stressed out and stress is no good with these guys. So you're going to want to have that heat mat slapped on the side of the tank. Now, if you do have to go into the tank, i.e. cleaning, uh, making sure that it's okay and maybe redecorating from his little engineering, uh, you're going to want to shut that heat off for a few hours and chill him out. 
The reason you want to do this is because of how unpredictable they are. So they can go from completely still to running up your tongs in almost instant. These guys, they're very fast with their multiple legs as well as their unpredictability can make them kind of nerve wracking. So what you're going to want to do is you're definitely going to want to turn off that heat and chill them out before going in the tank. So for diet, these guys for the most part are going to be dumpster stomachs. That means they eat absolutely everything and anything. Does that mean they should be eating absolutely everything and anything? The answer is no. So what I like to feed mine at home are going to be mostly crickets and earthworms and superworms. Um, I actually keep some superworms right in the tank sometimes, depending on how large my centipedes are, uh, for a little bit of cleanup crew, as well as it's mostly food for scavenging. What I recommend is going to be mostly crickets and earthworms. What you can also offer though are going to be canned uh, grasshoppers as well as the fresh packaged dubia roaches. The only downside to these are you're going to have to tongue feed him once you get a little bit more comfortable with them. But again, going back to how unpredictable they are, they can always take that food and then just run up your tongs towards you. Anytime you go in that tank, I recommend wearing some form of leather gloves or PPE to protect yourself. The larger centipedes, such as Scolopendra heros and the Amazonian species, can also take down some vertebrate prey, such as small mice and small lizards. That being said, this isn't going to be the best for them as it's very fatty for them and they can't really digest vertebrate protein as well as going to be the crickets and earthworms. If you are going to offer this food, make it very minimal or not at all. Now, escaping can happen. These guys are incredibly intelligent and for the most part are one of the most intelligent and unpredictable invertebrates in the entire hobby. These guys will actually recognize and understand your daily routine and they will know when the most opportunistic time to escape would be. So what I recommend is making everything random. Don't have a set schedule for them. Misting, water, cleaning, everything random. Don't have a set schedule because it will remember it. For the most part, I can't say enough good things about these guys. I know that this was more of a serious video, but I have to be a little bit more serious with these guys because of their high potency venom. Here at Pisces Pet Emporium, they're the only animal that I actually mark with a three red dot. And it's because of their high venom and unpredictability. But that does not mean that they're a bad animal. They're actually my favorite invertebrate, period. I have four at home. These guys are great animals that I highly recommend to any advanced level invertebrate keeper. As long as you know what you're doing, you can get yourself one of these and have a very good time with them. My name is Brad at Pisces Pet Emporium. And if you have any other questions, please leave them down in the comments. Press that bell so you get notifications whenever we make new videos. Or you can come on in and speak to any of us here about these cool little invertebrates. Right? Enjoy the rest of your day.